second problem set focuses on the drywall and the paint for our structure. So if we look at our specifications, we see that we have our gypsum board for our drywall. We have half inch drywall on our walls and we have 5 eighths drywall on our ceiling. That is very standard. We need to look at then our interior trim and finishes to look at our additional information. We see that we have three coat, three coat joint finish for our gypsum board and we also have our wall finish as one prime coat and two finish coats. When we look at our additional specifications that are provided, it gives us our exact uh, conversions for our joint compound, that three coats that it is talking about, for how we can take from our square footage of wall to a pound and then into how many pails we need to purchase. Same thing with our joint tape. It takes us from our square footage to our lineal footage to the number of rolls. It talks about we are going to use four by 10 sheets of drywall for both the walls and the ceiling at the thicknesses specified. Our drywall clips are going to be every 16 inches on center. Again, these drywall clips are in the corners so we don't have to use our additional nailer. We have one gallon of primer covering 250 square feet, one gallon of paint, so that's any finish, whether it's flat, eggshell, satin, or semi-gloss, covers 400 square feet. And just reiterating, one coat of primer for the walls of ceiling. We're just going to do one coat of flat paint for the ceiling and then two coats of satin paint for the walls. It did not specify in the specifications how many coats of flat, so we need to include that on here. So starting off, we need to figure out how much square footage we're gonna have for our walls. This will dictate how many of the different components we need for our drywall and then for our paint as well. I specify do not subtract the openings. Reason is typically they will run over openings and then cut out later. So unless it is a large opening, uh, we'll just uh, account for the fact that that is how they will be installing it. So for now, do not worry about subtracting the openings. So when we're figuring up our drywall, we need to figure out the height of our walls and then we need to multiply that by the exterior lineal footage plus two times the interior lineal footage. So again, these are the walls that we're talking about at this point. We're coming up with a surface area, a vertical square footage, so that is why we need to know the height of our wall. The reason why we only do our exterior once is because we only have drywall on one side of the exterior walls. That's the inside of the exterior walls. The outside has whatever specified finish, whether it's brick or siding, whatever it may be. On our interior walls, we will have both sides of the wall covered in drywall. So that's why we need to make sure that we have both of those. So we can take our eight foot height as our standard. Remember when we were dealing with our stud height, adding the top plate and bottom plate, uh, and then accounting for our finish of our flooring and then the drywall on the ceiling, we will get back to a finished floor of eight feet. So, or sorry, a finished ceiling height of eight feet. So we can use this in our calculations. Multiply that by the exterior dimension we found in problem number two plus two times our interior. So this is our total interior. So this is the 10.75 feet of our two by six wall and the 130 feet that is our two by four walls. You can go ahead and use the number we calculated to combine the two previously. That's fine if you need to write it out longhand. Again, that's fine as well. So we have our eight feet times 405.5 or 32.44 square feet of drywall on our walls. So this is the surface area of all of the walls for drywall. For number five, 
we're looking at how many drywall sheets we need to purchase to cover the 3244 square feet of wall. Given in the specs on the problem set, I tell you that a sheet of drywall is 4 by 10 by half inch. The half inch is the thickness. It is irrelevant on the surface area. The 4 and the 10 are the two numbers that we care about. So one sheet covers 40 square feet of wall. Given this, we can take the 3244 total square feet, divide it by the 40 square feet per sheet, and we end up with 81.1, and again, round up to the nearest whole number, 82 each. Again, this is for our walls only. Chances are we could probably get away with 81, but at this point, again, we still want to just always round up to be safe and uh, a lot of times we would account for a waste factor anyway. So just be in the practice of no matter how small your decimal, always round up to the nearest whole number. Next up, we have our ceiling, square footage. So we also need this for drywall and paint applications. So this is the square footage that is above us, so that's the same as the square footage below our feet. So the flooring and the ceiling is the same square footage. And we can simply take the 36 foot length times the 26 foot width for 936 square feet. Where we have all of our walls, on plan 100, we aren't going to have drywall on the ceiling where all these walls are, obviously. But it would be a very detailed um, calculation to subtract out the top plate square footage from all of the ceiling square footage. And it's going to be very minimal in the grand scheme of the entire uh, floor plan. So we can simply take our overall dimensions to get the total square footage. We do not have to be any more precise than that. Once we have the number, or sorry, the square footage of our ceiling, we can figure out the number of drywall sheets we need. So for our ceiling, we said that we are still gonna use four by 10, but this time it is gonna be 5 8 inch as specified. But again, surface area, we only care about those first two numbers. So it is still going to be 40 square feet per sheet so we can take our 936 square feet and divide it by 40 square feet per sheet. And we get 23.4, or round up to 24 sheets of drywall for our ceiling. Sometimes we need to leave them separate. When we're dealing with the square footage of our ceiling and walls, sometimes we might be able to combine them. So we'll go ahead and number eight and combine those two numbers. So this is just our total square foot of walls and ceiling. So it's the 3244 square foot we calculated in number four, plus the 936 square feet we calculated in number six, and we get 4180 square feet as our total square footage. This is actually going to come in handy for the next two problems. So moving on to number nine. It is asking for the number of pails for our a joint compound for our drywall mud. So we were given our conversion on the specification that we have 14 pounds per 100 square feet and the compound then comes in 64 pound pails. The 14 pounds per 100 square feet is pretty standard, but you always want to make sure and look at what the actual coverage will be on whatever product you're purchasing. And then if you use this uh, conversion, then you just have to then simply figure out how large of pails are you purchasing. So you wanna make sure you look at the weight for that, if it's not included all in one. 
So from this, we need to use our total 4180 square feet because regardless whether it is a ceiling or a wall, the thickness of the drywall doesn't matter how much joint compound is needed. So we need to include it all as one. If we multiply that by the 14 pounds per square feet, we end up with 585.2 pounds of joint compound needed for all of our drywall applications. But that still doesn't give us the final answer So because we're looking for the number of pails. So we can take our 585.2 pounds, divide it by the 64 pounds per pail that is given to us in our specification, and we end up with 9.144, which we round up to 10 pails of joint compound or drywall mud, however you want to call it, that we are needed for plan 100. Number 10 is a very similar calculation, but this time we're looking at our joint tape. So our joint tape, we have 35 feet per 100 square foot of wall that is required to cover all of our seams. Again, this is a very standard conversion, but make sure you look and use the correct conversion. And this one comes in 250 foot rolls. So starting off, we use our same total square footage of walls and ceilings. Since this is the same place we put our joint compound as we put our tape, it is 35 feet per 100 square feet. And I apologize, I want to write up here, and number nine, it is per 100 square feet. That will get you the correct number. I forgot to write the 100. But here we have 35 feet per 100 square feet for our tape, and that gives us 1465 feet of tape needed for all of our walls and ceiling. Our 1465 feet divided by the 250 feet per roll that we are purchasing gives us 5.852 or round that up to six rolls of tape that are required for our drywall application. The last area that we are dealing with with the drywall are our drywall clips. So as you recall, if we have a corner so I'm going to draw an isometric view. This is an interior corner that we are working with. We have drywall clips that run vertically along our wall. That vertical spacing is 16 inches on center. That is given to us. So in our calculation to figure out how many clips we need per corner, it's simply our repetitive number calculation. We have our eight foot ceiling height. We divide that by the 16 inch on center spacing. And that gives us six spaces. Remember it's the number of spaces we are given and then we have to either add or subtract. In this case, for our top and our bottom, the drywall will be able to be nailed into the bottom plate and the double top plate of our corner. So we don't need to have a drywall clip at the top and the bottom. So therefore, we subtract one. We don't need to have the clip there. We have five clips per corner. We can multiply that by the number of corners that are in plan 100. You could go through and count all of them. And I recommend if you want to do that to verify my calculation, by all means do so. But I can tell you that there are 51 corners in plan 100. So I'm giving you this number and if we take our five 
per corner times our 51 corners, we get 255 drywall clips that are required for plan 100. Next up for number 12, we're now moving on to paint. So the first thing we are going to calculate is the number of gallons for primer. So primer goes on before your finished paint. This helps create a smooth surface and have your uh, paint actually adhere to the wall uh, in as few a number of coats as possible without primer. A lot of that paint will just be absorbed into the uh, drywall and you're going to waste a lot of money on unneeded layers of paint to get where you want the actual finish to be. So it's very standard to apply primer on all of your walls and ceiling prior to your finish. So here, since primer goes on everything, we want to make sure and we use the 4180 square feet that is the walls and the ceiling together. Again, we are given some information on our problem set that one gallon of primer covers 250 square feet. And we only are going to use one coat of primer for the walls and ceiling. So all we have to do is take our 4180 square feet, divide it by the 250 square foot coverage per gallon, and we see that we get 16.72, round up, and we have 17 each, or if you wanted to write 17 gallons, whichever way you prefer, of primer needed for both the walls and the ceiling. For number 13, we are looking at the number of gallons of flat paint needed for the ceiling finish. We discussed the different types of finishes in lecture, and since flat is very standard to use on the ceiling, and typically you only need about one coat as long as you can uh, adhere it properly for our um, paint. But again, it usually doesn't matter what your finish is, it can still cover approximately the same amount. So our paint, regardless of the finish, is going to be covering 400 square feet, and again, one coat of flat for the ceiling. So ceiling is what we're looking at in number 13. And we have 936 square feet for our ceiling. We have 400 square feet per gallon. And we, that gives us 2.34, which we would then round up to three gallons of paint needed for our ceiling. And lastly, for our walls, if we look at our specifications, we have still paint, uh, regardless of finish, 400 square foot of coverage. Here we're going to use two coats of satin paint for the walls. So when we do our calculations, we take the 3244 square feet for our walls, we divide it by 400 square feet per gallon gives us 8.11. We multiply that by two because we're using two coats. 16.22 round up and we get 17 gallons of paint needed for the walls. One thing I want to point out here is that we did not get an answer of 8.11 from our original calculation, round up to nine, then multiply by two to get 18 as our number of gallons needed. Reason being is once we have gone through our first coat and we have only used approximately 10% of our last gallon that we opened, we're not gonna throw away all of that paint. We can save it and we can then use it when we start our second coat. So it is not proper to round up first and then multiply. You must multiply first 
and then round up. Otherwise, you're going to end up with an entire additional gallon in this instance, depending on how large it is. It might even be larger than that for waste factor. So you want to make sure that you are calculating it properly. And that is the sample problem for our drywall and our paint for plan 100.